In the shadowed corridors of history, there lies a cryptic tale that echoes through the ages, a haunting enigma that reverberates with the ominous whispers of an ancient curse. It unfolds in the heart of the Valley of the Kings, where the golden mask of a boy pharaoh named Tutankhamun lay buried, shrouded in secrets and guarded by the ghosts of an empire long past. In Luxor, Egypt's Valley of the Kings, archaeologist Howard Carter and his colleagues found the entrance to a tomb on November 4, 1922. On November 26, three weeks later, Carter broke through a stone wall in an underground corridor there. His friend and patron, George Herbert, the fifth Earl of Carnarvon, asked him whether he could see anything as he pointed his torch into the darkness. According to his book, The Discovery of the Tomb of Tutankhamun, co-written with Arthur Cruttenden Mace in 1923, he said, Yes, wonderful things. Gold jewelry and other amazing riches suddenly came to light for the first time in almost 3,000 years, and the whole world was enthralled by a little-known pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. The public focus swiftly moved to the notion that anybody who had visited King Tut's tomb may be under a curse. People began to speculate that anybody who had ventured to violate the pharaoh's last resting place would suffer from an evil spell as a result of sudden deaths terrible tragedies, and other unexplained happenings. After every disaster, Luxor was plunged into a media frenzy. Newspaper headlines about the curse of the pharaohs and the assertion that famous spiritualists sees occult reason for fatality appeared shortly after the death of the first archaeologist, which happened a few months after the tomb was discovered. Was there, however, a curse? A less spectacular explanation has been proposed by certain studies. Mold discovered in the air and on mummies at Egyptian burial sites. The notion of a mummy's curse predates the discovery of Tutankhamun by 100 years. It could have started in the 1820s in England. According to the British newspaper, The Independent, Egyptologist Dominic Montserrat claimed to have found the first reference to it in a London striptease act in 2000. No curse has ever been discovered etched in hieroglyphics in the tomb of Tutankhamun, the 18 or 19-year-old Egyptian pharaoh who passed away in 1323 BC. Based on DNA tests, his mother was his father's sister, and his father is believed to have been the pharaoh Akhenaten. Due to the royal family's history of incest, King Tut may have suffered from scoliosis and a clubfoot. Carter called the idea of a curse Tommy Rot and rejected it. According to H.B.F. Winstone in his book, Howard Carter and the Discovery of the Tomb of Tutankhamun, the Egyptologist expressed a sentiment of respect and awe, entirely opposed to foolish superstitions rather than dread. But tales of witchcraft were dashed when Lord Carnarvon passed away on April 5, 1923, just five months after the tomb was unveiled. News reports of potential deaths were abundant as more explorers and archaeologists became ill. The title of an item published in the New York Daily News in 1926 read, Vengeance of King Tut is seen as death list mounts. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of the well-known Sherlock Holmes novels, added insult to injury. Doyle, a well-known spiritualist informed a reporter that an evil elemental may have caused Lord Carnarvon's fatal illness after learning of his friend's death. Following the Earl's death, other notable figures included American financier George J. Gould, who died of pneumonia soon after visiting the tomb in 1923, Sir Archibald Douglas Reed, who died shortly after X-raying the mummy in London, and American archaeologist James Henry Breasted, who lived until 1935, but passed away from an infection after his last trip to Egypt. Furthermore, a string of tragic incidents that befell other people who had visited the tomb provided fuel for the media frenzy. Hugh Evelyn White, a British archaeologist who worked on the excavation at Luxor, committed suicide in 1924. It has been stated that he left a letter saying, I have succumbed to a curse. In 1929, Richard Bethel, Carter's personal secretary and the first person to enter the tomb behind his boss, 
was discovered dead from suffocation at his men's club in London. Some historians think the English magician Aleister Crowley killed him. Carter passed away in 1939, exactly 17 years after Hodgkin's disease, a kind of lymphatic cancer was identified. Nevertheless, while publishing his obituary, newspapers all throughout the globe concentrated almost solely on the curse of the pharaohs. Science now provides a more logical answer. Research has shown that an organic source may have been responsible for at least some of the fatalities. On King Tut's mummy common mold, particularly Aspergillus, may have been present. It is well recognized that the fungus may lead to severe infections in those with compromised immune systems. Studies show that prolonged periods of dormancy can lead to increased virulence in potentially harmful fungi, which can survive for extreme lengths of time in tombs. The English physicians Tariq and Sheriff El Tal wrote in a 2003 letter to the British medical journal The Lancet. The diagnosis seems to suit the death of Lord Carnarvon, who suffered from upper respiratory illnesses and was ill for most of his life. His death from pneumonia, resulting from blood poisoning from a mosquito bite on his cheek that grew septic when he nicked it with a razor, was reported in the New York Times obituary on April 5, 1923. Eltoels said that when he cut himself with a razor, he had probably been exposed to aspergillus, which in turn caused the fatal streptococcus infection that killed him. According to the Eltoils, aspergillus spores need a lot of grain to develop, and Tutankhamun's tomb had enough of it, with bread and uncooked grains kept in several baskets as gifts. It is possible that Lord Carnarvon breathed in tainted grain dust as the locked tomb was being broken into. More recent scientific investigations have found two different types of the fungus, Aspergillus niger and Aspergillus flavus, on mummies and in Egyptian tombs. These strains may result in a variety of allergic responses, from chest congestion to pulmonary hemorrhaging or bleeding in the lungs, according to National Geographic. It is speculative to think that mold played a role in the Earl's death or any other. For years, scholars have debated the notion from both sides. It will be a hypothesis until there is solid proof, which naturally adds to the persistence of the curse of the money concept. Whether the deaths that befell the daring explorers were a consequence of supernatural wrath or mere coincidence remains an open question suspended between the realms of history and myth. The curse, like a spectral guardian, still hovers over the legacy of Tutankhamun, casting its spectral veil across the sands of Egypt. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more captivating content, and ring the notification bell to stay updated on our future expeditions.